to Mike Chank Waifu Waifu. King Teliano, is that you? 213, we here, what's happening? This is episode 213 of Mike Check Waifu Waifu. As always, it's brought to you by Patreon. Do you go to patreon.com slash Mike Check Waifu Waifu to get early access to the video version of this podcast, to get access to the after story, our exclusive podcast. Again, we're so sorry. Listen, we know we said we're going to be consistent, but the, there was two things, okay? Two very important things that happened that didn't allow us to record for the past couple of weeks. Um, we apologize, but it's coming and we're going to have a real thick episode for y'all for the after story and the Patreon support. It's going to be really, really good. So we appreciate your patience with that. Sorry about that. But it's brought to you by Patreon. Get exclusive access to our, after, our bonus podcast, the after story conversational podcast, where we just talk about whatever, um, whatever we want, whenever we want, however we want. Um, it's, this newest episode is going to get deep, so... Please subscribe to Patreon for, to get access to that. Um, highly, highly recommend it. We also get access to our watch-alongs, our trailer reacts, our uh, read-alongs, all kinds of content over on patreon.com slash Mike Check Waifu Waifu. But this show is brought to you by the Patreon producers, the people who keep the lights on over here on patreon.com slash Mike Check Waifu Waifu. And that's Dre to go G, Johnny, J. Lee Trey from Show Go Ha, and it's our demand of a blurt. Get the pro from Chaotic Culture and Show Go High. Monique Williams, Nachi, and Saphir. Thank y'all. That's explicitly, explicitly too. Thank y'all for producing this and many other episodes of the podcast. We truly appreciate y'all for supporting us. It means the world to us and all of our other Patreon supporters. We couldn't do this without y'all. So thank y'all so much for supporting us. Uh, I don't want to um, under, undersell the fact that any amount of support is dope amount of support. And we appreciate y'all. So we love you. We definitely love you. Uh, Mike Check Waifu Waifu is the anime podcast that's brought to you every Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. CDT, where we bring you anime, seasonal anime topics, uh, and just kind of whatever we want to talk about. Um, shout out to everybody that went to DreamCon and, and made it back home safely. Uh, looks like y'all had a lot of fun. We appreciate everybody uh, telling us that we got to make sure we make it. Maybe one day, maybe one day, maybe one day we'll slide through somewhere if it's uh even if it's not dream con or if it's somewhere else we'll make we'll make sure we'll pop up sometime somewhere <laughs> anyway damn saber's hair floating everywhere um also this is episode 213 216 episode 216 so three weeks from now we will be doing a live episode a live stream recording on sunday um we didn't what time 10 same time 10 yeah yeah yeah, yeah. On Sunday, August, uh, if I'm if I'm if my math is mathing, August twentieth is our two one six episode. We're doing a live stream episode on our YouTube channel, youtubecom slash at Mike Check Waifu Waifu. Make sure you guys are subscribed to our YouTube channel so you do know about that live episode. Be a part of the show live. Um, we're also still going to post it on on um, obviously on Patreon in the video version as well as uh, on the podcast feeds as like as normal. So it's going to be a pretty much a normal show. We're just doing it live on YouTube. It's a special episode. 216 is where we're we from. It's the area code of Cleveland. So that's where we decided to do our special um, episode. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Mike check wife wife. We appreciate you for doing that. Uh, it means a lot to us. We're going to try to build up the YouTube a little bit more, a little bit, a little bit more better, you know, to, uh, yeah, yeah. We got some work to do. You know what I noticed till I didn't do any sound test or nothing. Um, but how you feeling? Man, bro, I feel real good. It's been a really good weekend. Uh, some, uh, not, not everybody knows, but some of y'all know it was my mother's birthday just recently. Happy birthday, I you. Ooh. Yeah. So she came out here for her birthday, spent some time with us, the kids, you know, my wife, my dad was here super, uh, I'm going to miss him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I went by too fast. So it was a good experience. A lot of fun. Yeah, how, about, how you feeling? Oh, my bad. 
No, I was just about to say, I, I'm, I'm glad you got to spend that time. But the only thing, the problem, I guess problem in quotes, if you know, it's not really a problem, but the biggest issue when you, after you spend time with your family is that you miss them more, you know? Yeah. Same with, same whenever I go to, go to Cleveland to visit, I miss my nieces and my nephews. It just, it, it kills me because I'm like, damn, I don't know when the next time I'm going to see them. And it's just, it's rough. It's a, it's a rough feeling when they leave or when you leave them. Cause it's like, I really enjoy spending time with them. And then again, we're, I mean, you you have your family, obviously, but we're we're by ourselves down here in Texas. Yeah, it's way different than what uh what we used to. You know what Ex- I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, and, you know, we got a really uh we we both got really close knit families, so mm-hmm. it's like you leave that little community. It's kind of hard. So yeah, right. I, it, it is. It's it's harder. My mother even said it's hard getting harder, but you know, it's it's a new experience out here for me. So yeah. Just, oh yeah. Like, and you enjoy yourself too. Like you, you living a you living a good one. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, man. For me, man, it's it's again. I'm gonna talk about all of this on the after story, but it's been fantastic for me. I've been in the uh, it's been the brightest I've felt since I've moved down to Texas. Well, outside of when I first got to Houston, it was it was it was awesome. Right now, at this very moment in particular, again, I'm I'm not going to talk about any of the specifics or particulars. Until the after story, so make sure you go to patreon.com slash Mike Tech Wife Wife to get access to this this upcoming episode. But it's it's been special, absolutely special for me. Everything is is looking up. Karma is real, you know, good or bad. I believe in that. I, I will stay believing in that because I feel like it's 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 due, you know. Um and that feels good, man. That feels good to talk about. Shout out again, I don't know when Semi gonna hear this. It's probably gonna be like 17 years later, but Shout out to mm-hmm. Semi, Semi Sensei, uh, for for going still going back into the archives. I think he was on one seventy six last I heard. Uh, he he mentioned to us he's like y'all got one more time to miss DreamCon, <laughs> oh, but we go like I said we're gonna try to get he out. Heard this. <laughs> he gonna eventually hear this about six months later, but uh, maybe maybe less maybe less I don't know I don't know. Uh, tell where do we want to go here? Do I want to? Do I want to get right to it or do I just want to vamp a little bit? Mm-hmm. Mm. We can trying to well, we can get right to it, brother. All right, episode of the week. What was your episode of the week this week? Friend and girlfriend. Wow, good one. Yeah, I, I love this episode. That was a it was a great episode. Um oh this is gonna oh, this is gonna fucking this is gonna flow so nicely into the main topic of the show today. Uh but for me, it's a tough one, man. It was a lot of good episodes. It was. You know what I'm going to go with? What's, what's that? I'm going to do it. Uh, JJK. Okay. This shit was fire, bro. It was, it was too good. It was too good. It was... Um, how can I say this? Very... Uh, just satisfying, you know? Again, we read it. We knew exactly what was going to happen and how it was going to happen. But to see it and the way they did it was so well done. And it's from a, a cinematography standpoint, from a director standpoint. It yeah. was so beautiful the way they transitioned from shot to shot in particular scenes. And just the fucking, it was it was incredible. It was incredible. I think we're going to, yeah, we talk about that in spoiler talk. But I, JJK was awesome this week. I love seeing this one animated. This was, was fire. You know what I was thinking about giving it to, though? I was really close to giving it to. Which one? Spellblaze, man. That one's also has been pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. I, I can see that, but definitely uh, JJK over there. 100%, 100%, 100%. Because like, what I like to do is I don't want to go for the obvious. You know, I don't want to go for the atypical, be usual. That's not what we about. Not saying that we con- con- contrarians or anything, which with this topic that I'm going to get to a little bit later, I, f- I feel like we are. Okay. In a way, you know, um, but I, I don't know, man. Maybe it's the whole manga reader thing. But without further ado, tell let's do further. All right, my my sleeper this season for the first time ever. The consensus is the opposite of what I feel for my sleeper. And for those of you that don't know, my sleeper is the Dream Boy is a realist. This anime in particular, I think, has been spectacular this season so far. But looking at it on Annie list, okay, the consensus yes. around the 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 anime community is that it's a sixty three percent. Now, 
63%. The only other show that low, no, it's not even that low. One of the shows that's most hated this, like now all of a sudden is Rent a Girlfriend. And that's still at a 68%. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Let me, another one that's, that's, that's hated is Classroom for Heroes, 62%. That's a, lo- a little bit lower than Dreaming Boy is a Realist, but 63%. And while, while I like both of those shows, Classroom yeah. of Heroes, I can understand a little a bit more. The Dream Boy in a Re- is a realist is not. Now I did a little bit of a little bit of snooping to figure out why the consensus is 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 what it is for this particular show. Okay. And going into the forms of any list, there's people saying that the reason why it's considered so bad is because so many light novel readers are confused about this. Let me just read you a, a little synopsis if you if you will let me. Let me find my glasses so I don't completely butcher it. <laughs> Okay, I got this. I got this light in my face, so it's kind of glary. But I'm I'm gonna do my best here. Um, I promise you, I I can read y'all. I can. I promise you, I had a very. Uh, I was in AP classes with tell at one point. It's okay. Anyway, um, it says honestly, it's so bad. It's funny. I can't even imagine how some of you are viewing this show without the light novel context. Because to me, if I hadn't read it before, I wouldn't understand shit with this pacing. Also, it seems the visual quality won't stop growing lower until we get. To a voice PowerPoint. <sighs> That's just one. That's just one comment on this. The latest episode. Episode 5. Yeah. Okay. Here's another one. Uh, the story seems stuck. Every episode. The, there are showing both the MCs. Wanting each other. But it's still a condition. But the, still the condition stays the same. <sighs> I'm. Uh, I haven't read the light novels. Well, not up to the current point, but I have caught up with the manga. So I know that they've cut a mess around with a lot of extreme. For one, these people can't type. I'm going to just say that. This this isn't me reading bad. This is exactly what they wrote. But uh, but they've cut and messed around with a lot of the extremely important stuff. So apparently within this story of this show, excuse me, I got to adjust my mic. According to this, to the, to the community is that there's so much and I think TCB mentioned in our Discord. Uh, make sure y'all go check out our Discord. It's linked in on our website, mycheckwifewifu.com. Apparently, they cut out so much of the light novels, so much important, like different contextual things that are important for building their relationship yeah. that everybody hates it. Everybody absolutely hates this show. Now, my question to you, Tell, is that as people who didn't read the light novels or didn't read the manga, how do you feel about my dreaming? Uh, the dreaming boy is a realist, and and those and those excerpts from the forms of uh, any list. So I'm gonna say that's wild, right? Because, and you gotta hear me out a little bit. My my runner up for episode of the week was my dream boy is a realist. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I really, really enjoyed this episode and I have been enjoying this anime. So to get that, uh, that aspect or that, that viewpoint from, you know, those who've read the light novel is kind of wild to me because I had no idea that this pacing was trash or it was just not actually going well in accordance to, to the novel readers. So that's kind of cool because there's just insight I couldn't have had. I mean, it's good, bro. I don't know. I don't it's understand. Good. Interesting. Do you expound on that a little bit more? I mean, why do you feel it's good that you had like? Well, well, what that I have the the difference. Like I I can't see it the way that the novel readers are. Oh, you oh that's what you meant by good. Yeah, like the show itself is good. Yes, but right. like, that perspective shift I think is is kind of important too because like, for instance, Twin Star Exodus anime Interesting. is a, divergent. But it's kind of good that I have that, the fact that I can see that light novel and know that uh, that's not quite what I want or what it could have been. So right. I think not being able to see that, that viewpoint is, is good, yes. Interesting. Okay, damn. You just put that in perspective. For me, it's like, dude, 63%. That means this show is getting one of the lowest ratings I've seen probably ever. I mean, outside of the stuff that we know is bad, right? Like, you know shit that gets like the 50s and 55s is because it's like terrible 3D all that shit like we know that stuff is going to be bad but something that I like thoroughly enjoy character uh, 
I even love the character progression. I love where the story is going and how it's interweaved between him and his his uh, lack of confidence around anything, but he still consistently shows a, a characterization that he feels is, I don't know, important. You know what I mean? But yeah. they're, they're like, they're, there's people that are heated. Like, even in the spoiler, she put like, like, yeah, there, there's some stuff that she put in. I'm not going to say it because it is absolutely spoiler. But there's, there's stuff that they put on that form that's like, I cannot believe they decided to do this instead of this. Or they, they're not going to do this at all because it's so important to the context. Now, what I'm thinking, and this is, and this is my perspective, full thought. Yeah. Okay. This is my perspective, full thought. What I'm thinking is that, and this is kind of what I want from this. So if you don't want to know anything about my dreaming boy as a realist, uh, fast forward a little bit. I don't fucking know. But um, my thought is that I don't want them to be together. I do not want the two MCs or where the show revolves around because if you don't know my dream boy is a realist is about a guy who's who's done constantly um quote unquote stalking in a in a non malicious way obviously but who who's basically constantly pestering if you will his crush to let you know let's be together she always said no she kept told him telling him no basically or or not telling him no but not giving him the time of day basically and he, he, he had a realization that he's done. He's not going to he's not going to pursue it anymore. And because he's not pursuing it anymore, she's like she's feel off about it. And when she sees him talking to other girls, she's like, well, yo, why are you talking to him? Even though you didn't give me a chance, you don't berate me about talking to other women. Like, it, it's just weird. It's a weird kind of situation. Now, he's all for it. He still thinks she's adorable. He, she's amazing. Blah, blah, blah. But he's keeping his distance so she can enjoy her, her high school life because, you know, he finds out that he was kind of um, keeping people away by him being so close to her. I love that concept. I also love the fact that it's not getting any closer and I don't want them to. And this is maybe because of my own personal bias towards this particular situation. Yeah. But I don't want them to be together. I just don't. I want him to find somebody else and I want them that somebody else to, for them to fall in love with each other. I know that's not going to fucking happen, but I feel like maybe that the creator or the author of this particular series decided that maybe for the anime, and this is me being wishful, you know, wishful thinking, uh, drinking some Kool-Aid, uh, polo Kool-Aid, maybe for the anime that they don't be together like I want, and he finds someone else. Because in a light novel, apparently, there's a lot of things and important situations that happen that kind of leads them to then become closer that hasn't happened yet in this particular show. Well, there's a lot lot of things at play here because we don't know how long this show is going to go on for, regardless of how they chop it up or whatever. But also exactly what you said, if the author or director decide that they want to go in a different direction because they like this idea better than the other, you know, it's just a retelling of a different story. So they can, uh, you know, I hate to say it, but that is essentially all it is. It's just a retelling of that, of that story. So, yeah if they do take it in the direction that some like specific, like what you're saying, you would like, I agree with that. I don't think they should be together either. Cause she, uh, <laughs> she missed her uh, chance. Exactly. So, so this is a, uh, regardless of where it goes, I hope that it's enjoyable. Like how it, how it has been. I don't want them to change it and, and things go, go awry. And I'm just like, what am I even watching? Why do I, why would I care to watch this? Right. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I keep thinking about it. I'm like, this is the first time ever I had a sleeper that's just not universally loved because every other sleeper, my galaxy next door, fucking, uh, angel next, every sleeper I've had has been spectacular. And, and like, we all felt the same, like, which is cool. I, I mean, I don't, again, I don't mind being different, but it's not like my intention to be different. It just kind of falls that way. And this one is very interesting. Now going over to, uh, rent a girlfriend. Rent a girlfriend is is if you look particularly any list, it still has a pretty decent score. But if you go specifically, I'm gonna go to Crunchyroll. Actually, if you go to Crunchyroll, it's really hard to get anything below a four point five. Okay, this show has a four point three out of fifty two thousand reviews or our ratings. I'm sorry, seven hundred ninety eight reviews. 
4.3 stars is really hard to get. And now I'm telling you, when I say it's hard to get below 4.5, fucking there's terrible yeah. anime, 4.5, 4.6, 4.7. That's kind of where it sits because if you're on Crunchyroll watching a show and continually watching a show that you consider bad, you either won't rate it or you will rate it once and stop watching. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like there's, there's particular things to that. Now, Rent a Girlfriend is hated specifically for the MC. While I can't disagree with that, the MC is absolute garbage. The show itself is still fire. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's hated, bro. When I say hate it, like hate it, hate it. People hate this fucking show. And I get it, but uh, this episode was phenomenal for me. It was, uh, <laughs> it was everything. Yeah. It was everything. And then it was disappointing too. Mm. Mm. Are we? Should we take this to spoiler talk? Yeah, because I want to know what's disappointing. I really, I'm really curious. I I, I can say this. It's, it's yeah. That that'll be a quick thing to touch on. I, you got me wondering, bro. You got me wonder. What what would you say is the the absolute uh the most popular anime that you hate? I mean, the only one I could really think of is is fairy tale. That's really the only one I can think of. Yeah, but you know, most people hate this. <laughs> yeah, but well, I, most people hate fairy tale. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I can think of. Yeah, I mean, I guess for us, mostly Black Clover, though, right? Yeah, because that's more popular than fairy tale. But we fucking hate that disgustingly terrible show, you know? Yeah, they 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 dropped the ball for sure, big time, big time. They did way better. Uh, for me, it's always going to be Attack on Titan. Uh, and why, why Attack on Titan? Still? Because <laughs> okay, listen, Attack on Titan. I loved it, bro. If you go back to the start of this podcast, I absolutely loved Attack on Titan. I I almost had it was it was a, a fucking just a, a sliver away from being in my top five. Like I loved Attack on Titan. Then I read it. And that was the it was the biggest fucking just I read it and when I read it, I had the same thought that I had when I watched it. And that's fuck, dude. Like they ruined these characters. They completely ruined these characters for me. They lost all personality. They lost all significance to anything. And and again, as I always say, Characters are the most important things to me when it comes to anime. I don't give a fuck. Like, you can have a shitty world, but great characters. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can have a great world, shitty characters, i.e. Attack on Titan, and it just completely ruined. I would not like the show anymore. I don't care about the ending. The ending is is what the author wants the ending to be, and it's fine. I, I'm okay with however you want to finish that. The ending isn't the problem why I hate Attack on Titan. It's what they did with the characterization of it, and I fucking hate it. I hate it so much what they did to the characters. And I, f- I fell out of love. I fell out of love. And that is clearly one of the most popular shows ever. But there's a there's a reasoning behind it, right? Like, I don't just have a spite because, you know, the anime is different from the manga or whatever the case may be. I think that shit is kind of, you know, or I'm not even being a contrarian because it's popular. Because, again, I was an advocate for Attack on Titan. So, I don't know. I just feel, I feel jaded. I mean, it's you do feel jaded, but I do. It's, it's okay to change your opinion on something when you get new, new information. You know what I mean? Like, literally, you can like an anime all the way until the ending, and if the, that last twenty seconds is trash and it gives you the worst possible scenario as an ending, it's okay to decide to hate the entirety of that anime because right. that ending spoils it all. Right? You know what I mean? It's, I mean, look, it's like a, a total package almost. Exactly. We, okay, so think about the Game of Thrones. This is a perfect, perfect example of that. Like the show was so fucking good until like season seven, and then you're like, "What the fuck? What's happening?" It's, it completely goes downhill, and you're like, "Fuck! What's what's going on?" Does that mean the entire show is trapped? Yes, yes it does. <laughs> yes it does, because it goes from per almost perfection as far as a TV series goes when it comes to structure, again characters, world, 
fucking intrigue and backstabbing and blah, 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 to whatever the fuck it was at the end. And it's like, yo, I don't, I don't think Game of Thrones is good anymore. That's entirely possible. Same, yeah. oops, same for me with a, a video game I used to like. And that's The Last of Us. Yeah, I didn't even say Last of Us. <laughs> I used to love the fucking Last of Us. Last of Us, the first game was incredible. It was an experience that I would never forget. And then Last of Us 2 came out. And I swear to God, I felt like I was, I was streaming. I streamed the whole thing. I feel like I was going to work a nine to five that I fucking, I was going in the factory. <laughs> I'm like, bro, I don't, I want to fucking play this shit. But they're like, yo, you got to finish it. Yo, you started streaming it. There's people that's been here since the start of it. You got to finish it. I'm like, fuck. And I'm just playing it. And I'm like miserable playing this fucking game, dude. It was because for one, I don't know what happened to the writing, but it turned into complete shit. And I think Neil Druckmann is a great writer usually, but whatever he they decided to do with the last of us for shock value or I don't, I don't know to, to try to impress. I don't fuck. It was awful, which I mean, again, I understand it ain't going to be perfect, but it just was, I, it was hard for me to enjoy that game, but I beat it. I finished yeah. the whole fucking thing 40 hours in or whatever the fuck it was. <laughs> uh, On the contrary though, game was story was trash yeah absolutely absolutely 100 percent. after I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with season two of uh last of us the show though that's going to be interesting you think they, well they, you think they're gonna keep it canon yeah yeah of course i don't know if they're gonna do the canon the same because you if you do it the same the show is gonna get destroyed on the internet only because it wasn't the game wasn't told chronologically in a lot of cases. If they tell it chronologically, then it's over. Like they No, if yeah, it wasn't told chronologically. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. If they tell it chron- chronologically, then it probably would be good until season three. And then when season three happened, that's when it'll probably fall off. Because if they tell it chronologically, you still got from when Ellie is growing up. Mm. That's all I'm gonna say to that. Um because I don't want to spoil, you know, Last of Us part two. Awful, awful game. Um, <laughs> where do we go from here? You said awful game. Um, <laughs> you got anything you want to, to, to touch on? Oh, no. Nah, other, other than the fact that, hear me out. Talk to me. <laughs> After, you know, because last week we dropped some anime. Okay. It was, it was yeah. so light and refreshing this week. Yes. To not watch. 20 episodes of something. <laughs> Talk to me about that palate, palate cleanser. Oh, man, man, bro. Hear me out. Everything seemed good. Everything. Uh, and and hear me, I was like, last week, I know I watched some anime that I was disappointed with. This week, I felt like I watched nothing I was disappointed with. And that's why I feel like that previous episode was so important. Yes. Because it really did trim off that fat. To where it's literally just stuff that I can just sit down, turn it on, and I can enjoy it. It doesn't even feel like a bro, like an effort, <laughs> bro. I was so confused. I'm like, damn. I like I looked at yesterday. I was because I thought you know I wasn't sure if we was gonna record until you text me. So I'm like, I'm looking at everything. I'm looking at the list. I'm like, damn. So I I watched everything. What? I'm I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> and then you told me it was recording today, which is today we're recording on Monday today. So I got to get this edited up tonight, but. I'm like, I looked at the list and the only thing that came out that I was watching is the Dreaming Boy is a realist. So I'm like, mm-hmm. well, shit. I could talk about the Dreaming Boy is a realist most recent episode for once and be caught up on that instead of having to talk about last week's episode when the episode drops on Monday and then our episode drops on Tuesday. So I was like, damn, it feels good, man. And you know what? I'm I'm shocked that, is this, is this Bleach Talk this week? Yeah. Yes, it is because it's episode four. Yeah, we did. We did. Okay. So, again, Bleach is fucking incredible. It shows why it's kind of, you know, kind of becoming, you know, top of the, top of the, you know, the quote unquote big three list. You know, I, I don't, I don't want to say it, you know, sorry, One Piece fans. And I'm a Naruto fan, but sorry, Naruto, you know, but Bleach is becoming kind of, one of my favorites because I'm fucking loving this pacing. I'm loving where it's at, you know? It's not breakneck uh, like speed, but yep. it's like also not 
too slow. It's we getting somewhere. Yes. And, and ironically enough, uh, without hitting too much of spoilers, we ain't seen Ichigo really, mm-hmm. and it doesn't feel like we're missing anything right now. You know what I mean? Because they and always give important. us something, right? But that's what I'm saying. That's how important it is. You know how how many how many anime can go this long without their their MC? And make the world the MC, right? Literally, it's the battle that's the that's the main character right now, and we mm. just follow that. It doesn't even matter if Ichigo is there at this point because of the battle itself being the character we follow. You know what? I said this before, and it's not necessarily even the world. To be honest, it's the it's just the characters themselves. Bleach does. I said this on Twitter on our uh, uh or sorry, I said this on X. Uh, <laughs> follow us on x x.com slash mic check waifu, uh, waifu but I said this here and I said I don't give a fuck what you feel about Bleach you hate it love it nothing they have some of the coolest fucking characters of all time like the best fucking just it doesn't yeah. matter if they're a villain or hero or anti-hero or vigilant it don't matter what they what, what you feel the characters are so fucking dope all of them I don't I don't know if there's a character that's like not cool. I, I can't think of one. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, Even like the characters they make that are not supposed to be cool are kind of cool. Are cool as fuck, bro. Like, for instance, this this wrestler Quincy is somebody that you're supposed to think this fucking guy is corny. I think he cool as shit because of the way they just kind of interweave him and, and show his strength and like uh, the the fact that the fact that Bleach does like villains so well i mean they're probably the best i, I mean pain and madara they're fucking great don't get me wrong they're top of the top top echelon but eyes and and, and you watch or however the fuck you say his name and, and just everybody that's in bleach that's a villain or evil you never know how the fuck are y'all gonna win mm-hmm. like you just don't you feel like you're your guys you're the people the cool ass people you root for you don't know if they can win and if and, and to know that this show the good guys always win, but to still have that feeling, that aching pain in your chest, like, yo, I don't know. Who f- yo, you probably going to die. Like, you're probably going to die. Yeah. And they, they don't die, but you still have that in, that that gut feeling like, oh, I'm worried. I'm concerned. And it just moves and it glides. Like, it bleeds fucking glides, bro. I don't know if that makes sense. But when you it watching it, perfect. it fucking glides. It's like the quickest 23 minutes ever, bro. It's just so smooth. Oh, sorry. I'm, I can talk about this shit all day, man. I'm I'm in a I'm in a good mood. I could talk yeah. about this shit all day when it comes to bleach. And it was a fire episode. It was yes, yes. Uh, so previously, we found out about how the Quincy's really using the shadows and everything to get wherever they need it. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, the the Quincy's bounced back and kind of bodied uh, our soul reapers or some of our captains, not all of them. After they have a slight, after the captives have a slight win, just a little slight right. win when it comes to like not getting their bunkai stolen. This is Bleach Talk, so y'all know we was going to the spoilers, so fuck it. Who cares? Um, yeah, like this, a slight victory when it comes to not getting their bunkai stolen, and it's just, it didn't last long. My, qu- yeah. my question to you, though, Montel, What's okay? up? sorry to use the government, is what do you think is going to happen with, well, what the fuck was you, uh, what are you doing? And why was he pulling up on like a lot of the losing Quincy's? Like, is he taking their power? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, is he is he could, so undercover loving right now? I don't know. I I'm not. I I feel like he's maybe he's just gathering them right for like a, a final show of strength. Like you know, but they're they're done. Like the the people he's gathering, quote unquote, are beat the fuck up. Man, you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's a it's a situation. Yeah, I just then, don't. Then I don't maybe know. maybe that is it, maybe that is exactly what it is because we know that uh, what's his name, Yoach, used to basically step on the other Quincy's and he controlled what powers he could have. So maybe that is what he's doing. Yeah, uh, that's the only thing I think of. Is power so he can you know have his added to his. Is he is he really evil? Not, I would highly doubt it. Highly mm. doubt. I think, I think they, they, I think first of all they write Bleach better than that, and I and I say that in regards to Udu ain't never been that. 
Uh, but right. he always has been is family oriented. And and for the uh for whatever his culture is like whatever they say is for them that's what he he's on, mm. so I think they're writing him directly towards that he rides for what he was taught as his lineage or whatever so that's what he's gonna do, um, and wow that's exactly how they wrote him right is that not what he's doing or you're at least what it would appeal appear you to you are be? yeah you fucking spitting tonight I don't know what's going on with you damn <laughs> that's crazy because I I I believe that. I believe you're right about that. It's so fucking good, dude. It's so it's so good. I'm gonna put the I'm gonna try to put every time I put this our YouTube gets body, but I'm gonna try it anyway. I'm gonna put the precipice. The precipice of defeat has so many iterations this season. Yes. That's been sounding so especially at the end when Ichi goes walking uh doing his training, like after the credits and shit, and he's doing his fucking like walking with the spiritual pressure of the entire fucking king on his back. And he fucking trucking through it. He's in his in his plant. Oh, guys, it's so fucking smooth, man. It's the best, one of the best soundtracks of all time, especially since last week. Before this week, last week, so the guy who who Zon Pakto, who he turns people against each other and turns their fucking world upside down and backwards yeah. and shit. His fucking music was so good, tell so good, bro. <laughs> it blew me back. I remember literally bouncing, bouncing my head like, like what? What the fuck? This is a little soul in it. Like, what is all this? It's so good, man. It's so good, please. It's fucking incredible. I love it. I fucking love they, it so much. They know what they're doing. They definitely know what they're doing. All right, Tell. Let's talk about what we're going to talk about and spoil the half of the show. Um, Rent a Girlfriend is definitely getting that ticket. Yeah. Uh, We're not giving enough love to Zom. Yeah, we can do that. So maybe we throw Zom in there. This is a whole. This We're we, we changing it up. And then we, what else we got? I want to do like JJK. JJK. Yeah, I want to do JJK. Okay. Let's do Jobless. Because I, right. I think Jobless got some shit in there that we can talk about. All right, man. Let's take this quick break. And when we come back, we're going to spoil. Let's, let's talk about it. We're going to spoil. We're going to start off with Rent a Girlfriend, episode four. Then let's go to Zom, episode four. And then we're going to talk about Jobless, episode five of Jobless Reincarnation. So... We'll be right back after these. Pull 
Gucci, then I lost Gucci. And welcome back to episode 213. We did 213 episodes. It's insane. That's insane. Time flies, man. It definitely flies. And uh, we got another 213 in this, at least. All right. <laughs> so, uh, well, let's, uh, let's get into the spoiler talk, man. This is going to be a short episode, by the way. But that's all right. That's all right. Spoiler talk. Starting off with Rent a Girlfriend, man. What talk to me about Rent a Girlfriend and how you feel it it became your episode of the week this week? I mean, I know, but you know, let the people know, you know. Uh Rent a Girlfriend did uh some amazing things this week and, and a lot of it was literally just based on the fact that it uh it followed up heavily on what was talked about in the previous episode, right? But not only it just kind of went right into it. And and it almost provides a solution. Yes. Uh, because I'm not going to say it is the actual solution, but it almost provides a solution. And it, it forces uh, Mizuhara or Chizuru, whatever you want to call her. It forces her into a situation where she either has, she has to address this now. Mm. And I'm not saying that she has to address whether she likes him or he likes her or anything, how they're going to address the relationship or anything like that. But it's more about like the fact that she has to to look at what she's currently doing and then think about almost everything that that has been happening so far because she can't just overlook it anymore right it's been brought to her Oof. mind as a reality so uh Spin yeah, again it's it's this that's what made it so serious is it was you got to talk about it now it has to get talked about even if it's not today it's getting talked about now and, and you know what the most important, this particular episode, the most important piece of what happened is, was that date that she yeah, went on. Exactly. And she, yeah. and he asked, do you like him? Mm-hmm. And she said, I do not like him, but mm-hmm. I don't not like him. That fucking like, oh, I'm like, oh shit. So what does that mean? Exactly. You know what I mean? That's a. Now nah, that's the part that disappointed me. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and, and I say that part disappointed me specifically for the fact that uh, it is a. <sighs> Did she pull a polo? Did she friends on him? She she. <laughs> yes and no ish, right? Because uh, it's like it could mean that she literally wants more, right? How though? Because I don't. It I'm not sensing that at all. That she loves him, right? And that's what I'm saying, right? I don't sense it. But I think that it's a misdirection. Time out, time out, time out, time out, time out. Cause, okay, so let me let me back up. If I remember correctly, she he asked specifically, do you love him? It wasn't do you like. Daisuke came out, which is love. Mm-hmm. And then the, the subtitle said love. So if that was the case, wouldn't she say yes? Well, she replied with like though and not love. Interesting. Interesting. So yeah, I mean that's clear then. It's clear as day. She don't love him. I don't know, bro. But I feel like it's a misdirection. And a misdirection. misdirection. And that's what, what bothers me. Ooh. Like it's it's don't try and apply something else, especially with such a direct situation, you know what I mean? You're making me hate this episode. <laughs> into it. Damn, dude, you you're convincing me that I don't like it now. But it was a good episode. But I, now I'm like, yes, because that it can be a great episode and you not like it. That's true. That's true. So is that how you feel essentially? Like it was a great episode, but you didn't like it? No, I, I thought it was a great episode just in general. Uh, am I a little salty? Yeah, but am I also like I was? I'm relieved with it because there is an answer, but I'm also it's irritated because the answer is it's not. Like, it's a non-answer. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. we got something, you know what I mean? Like yes. it's still something. Yes. And it's the first time that we got actually got something outside of our our, our MC's own skull. Cause in his own head, he's like, Yes, I love her. 
but no one else is saying anything. He not saying nothing. She not saying nothing. This is the first time we got motion from yes. somebody. And maybe that's why it's the most hated because of the bumbling foolishness that is the MC. Because the MC particularly says, and they talk, they touched on this last episode when uh, what's her face was kind of telling her, "Hey, he does love you," which I'm so glad. Like she just became one of the best characters in the show because she came out of nowhere with three episodes ago and put the fucking most progress that's ever happened in this entire show for three seasons. She put the most progress forward in just one, what, five minute, six minute scene where she's just like, you know, he loves you. Would you, would he be doing this if he didn't love you? Do you think somebody would be this involved with you as a rented girlfriend instead of trying to find a real girlfriend if he didn't love you? And she's like, wait a minute. You make you know? too much sense here. <laughs> yeah, wait a fucking minute. So when he when she sees him and then she gets a little flustered because she don't know how to react or, or see him now, mm-hmm. and she kind of like slams the door on him. And I fucking love that part. Like all that whole part of that episode was amazing. And then we go into this episode with the whole date and the, the whole non answer. It feels like for me, it kind of completely erased everything that she knows because now she knows that he loves her or. Maybe she still just doesn't believe it yet. That could be entirely the case. Maybe. Yeah. Now, I also think that we know how, how Mizuhara is, right? Uh, and, and I was thinking this as well. She has such a... Uh, she, she feels that she has to do her due diligence, right? And I, and I think with her answer, it could also be that kind of thing where she says, I... I don't like him, but I also don't not like him, right? She says it because that in her current position, she can't say she likes him. Oh, right? yeah. And I think that she has that kind of duty-minded thing where she's yeah. not in right now. She's but covering as her as ass. Over, as soon as she's over, it's like, yeah, I love that dude, man. That, I really, really like him. Like, he's the one. And that just don't uh, sound... What you're saying right now don't sound like her. It's pissing me off because I want to do... <laughs> I know, but you know what I mean, though, right? No, like, I know. I definitely. I, I think she has that mind frame to say, like, I'm not going to do it right now like that. But once this is over, I can say, yes, I do indeed like you. You're absolutely spitting. It drives me crazy because I, I just, it's just, it's. And we're going to touch on this in Jobless, but, you know, I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it for Jobless because I think that that's more, it's more prominent there. Mm-hmm. Um, But. Everything that's happening in this show it just it seems to be a series of unfortunate events and miscues and misreads and lack of experience and just these are college fucking people, bro. College students, man. These are adults. Yeah. And we're struggling with the most simplest of of actions that it kind of like it gets annoying after a while. And maybe that's why people, you know, shout out to Rob J. He's like, yo, I'm not I'm gonna wait till it's done. I'm gonna just binge it. And just people just give up on the show entirely because it's like you get kind of sick and tired of the runaround, of the spectacle right. of it all, you know. And funny enough, <laughs> when you think about it, we, we always say about the show, the girls are the best part about the show, the best thing about the show. Mm-hmm. We still ain't seen uh, mommy. Right. Like we seen her barely and she was kind of giving that look, but I don't, we don't know what the fuck is going on with her. And I'll tell you exactly why this season is better. And it's exactly what you said. In the first two seasons, everything was so all over the place. This this season, because of the, the goal, right? The shared goal, it's been a docile season. In the Interesting. Sense. Yeah. So it slowed down as a slice of life. When it's no longer, uh, hey, you're you're my boyfriend and you can't be with Mizuhara anymore. It's more like, okay, well... I'm going to help you with Mizuhara. Every, everybody is kind of getting on that consensus where they're all going in the same direction. Yeah. And it's much more calmer and docile. You know, like I said, it's anime season. So to me, that has significantly improved it and made it better. Not sure why the viewers aren't necessarily seeing the same perspective, but, you know, everybody got their own point of view. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was, listen, I don't know what it is, but I love it. I love it, man. I know what it is. It's, it's a good show. Outside of the MC's problem, it's still a good show, regardless. All right, moving on. Jobless reincarnation, bro. What I was going to say is, you know how 
Job is uh, how I said running girlfriends is a series of unfortunate events. <laughs> this particular show is a series of misunderstandings. And it's driving me up a fucking wall. I love it though. I love where it's going. But these misunderstandings is killing me, man. It's just literally that. Oh, okay. Obviously, a lot of important stuff happened this episode. Very, I mean, probably almost <laughs> normally I can't, it's hard to compare this because turning points, there's like three turning points in the show. And they're all so significant that like they they make the show what it is. Turning point one obviously is a teleport. Turning point two is uh, oh, what would I say is the turning point two? Was it Ruger? I think it was Ruger. Turning point three was the dra- the you know the dragon god or whatever the fuck you is the demon god whatever the fuck that guy was that body Rudius right? Yep. Turning point four was what Ares did. So there's these turning points in the show that. I mean, and they're literally titled. Those episodes are titled Turning Point. Turning Point 1, Turning Point 2, Turning Point 3, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm curious to see what the fuck the turning point is in this particular season because there is so much that is like shaping Rudius as a character, not only from his past experiences, from his past life, but making him what he is, including his ED, right? Like the, the fucking, the silliest thing about the show is this erectile dysfunction because he's afraid of women and being abandoned by women because of what happened with Ares. I think that, sh- that little silly miscommunication that happened, obviously, because we talked about that. I think we talked about this last week, how Ares just can't, she just learned how to write properly and she does not know how to form the proper words. Not only it, Internally or externally with herself vocally. Mm. But now you're about to make somebody who can't do that vocally also try to write that who's just learned how to write. It's kind of a it's kind of a hodgepodge of a mess that turned into what was left with that letter that he left uh, that she left for him. Not really understanding that she didn't mean anything like it. She just meant, hey, listen, I'm about to get stronger so I can protect you so you don't have to protect me, etc. So we know that. But this particular situation I think the most important piece of this was him seeing the uh, Lord man God again <laughs> as he called him mm-hmm. because this I think is going to lead us to I think what I believe is another turning point why I say that the reason why I say that is because he's going to the fucking school to become even more powerful mm-hmm. not only is he going to the school but he's going to the school where self selfie is as well mm-hmm so the implications with that, with that princess, with her people, with everything that's going on right now, is about to change the fucking world. And I'm just curious on what you think. <laughs> okay, so you said a lot, but I, I talked a lot. I'm uh, sorry. I was. I love this show. Essentially, uh, there is a lot, lot with that, and and my big thought process with it is. I understand his his mistrust with the invitation, right? Um, yeah, I'd of course it, yeah. he understands that it has to be utilized, right? That people are going to want to use him for for what he can do, his name. He's been building a title for a reason. Yes. Now I understand his mistrust in it, but I didn't understand. I understand his mistrust, but he should have been more, I guess, like understanding to the aspect because he's trying to put it, get his name out there. Right. And I feel like going to this, you know, school that he had intended on going to in the first place would only help bolster, you know, getting his name out there. So Wait. it, it Wait. seemed like a smart idea to go to the school. He never intended on going to the school, actually. Isn't that why he worked with heirs to get oh. money so he can go to a magic school? Well, that was before the turning point, right? Yeah. So I, I, I guess, but I don't think it was particularly this school, and it's it was just it was just to go to school to escape him being the recluse that he was in his past. So to go to school, I guess, would well, yeah, would technically be right, but it wasn't like th- this was not in his cards at all. His cards was to go find his mother as quick as possible, and now that he got the knowledge of where his mother is, he was going to go to Roxy. Because she's looking for his mother as well. So, but I'm talking about like way, way in the past. I'm okay, like okay, I see. Way, way back then, yes, his current goal. I understand what his current goal is, but I'm saying like with the, his current goal in mind, right? He wanted to get his name out there. Mm-hmm. You know, 
what is a good idea would, would be to go to the school. Now, obviously, he has more information. He knows that his mother has been located in, you know, these kind of things. So, yeah, now you can kind of look at, I guess, setting another goal for a change. You know what I mean? Right. <sighs> so spectacular. Now, there is um, there's a, a channel I watch, a YouTube channel that's fucking spectacular. It's called Annie News. Who does breakdowns of Jabba's reincarnation, breakdowns of uh, reincarnation, any isekai that you love, he, he breaks it down really, really nicely. He broke down the entirety of what actually happened with Sarah and like the light novels. And there's a lot that they skipped with her in particular, like a lot. So there's this, I don't know if they're going to show it next episode. So I, maybe I shouldn't touch it on it. But no, because they're, they're touching on They're going straight to the school. So there's no way that they would touch on it. But there is there was a whole arc of her just not of her understanding like, hey, I led Rudy to this situation because of my mean words, because I didn't understand what was going on. There was a, a situation to where Sarah actually met with Elise and Elise is that red hair uh, whore that Rudy was trying to root for or was trying to uh, sleep with. She mm -hmm. like she Elise was pissed off at Sarah because she the one that did that to Rudy is Rudy is. And she was like, yo, this is what you did to him. You turned him into this, this, blah, 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 blah. And she felt bad about it at one point where she was trying to get to the point where she wanted to catch Rudy is before he left, but he was already gone. Like it was just this whole emotional fucking thing that just we never got to see, which I thought would have been extremely dope because when he, the way he, the way he told her, her, her true story in a way to unravel, it made me like her a lot more. And it made me understand like the situation way more than what's going on now. So it's kind of sad to, to see that we probably won't see Sarah again. Um, but I was I was definitely um, I definitely understand why they didn't because where they went this episode. Uh, what you think about the elf coming back in into the picture, which is uh, you know his father's old party mate. I, I honestly I hated it. I'm, I'm gonna just say it now. I could stand there. I hate her it so is. much. It is what it is. I think she had an important role to play in, in, in delivery of message. But uh, yeah, I hate her character so much, dude. It, I mean, hey, it is what it is. Uh, the reverse prostitution or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I think that uh, yeah, she she had her role to play, and I even think that going forward, she has to be a powerful ally in a sense, right? Yeah. Like if she was with her with with his dad she's not a pushover in, a, in, in any kind of idea so maybe we'll have an episode of traveling with her to the school to see no we won't we just gonna land right in the school you they are they are they are already there yeah if you watch the end oh. of the, the credits they got they were there <laughs> yeah <laughs> which is i wish we could have got that though because i think that would have been fire i think that would have been really fire there's been a i mean jobless always does this though they're so good at slight time skips mm -hmm. to the point where it's, it doesn't feel jarring. Because if we notice, like, he's been in the city, that city for, what, three years, they said? Two two years, two years, I Yeah, yeah, it's, it's two or three years or two something or like that. But he he's, he's growing his ponytail, he's getting buffer. It's like, it's, it's slowly becoming like this. He's getting older. He's becoming more mature. So I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, what we get with this next arc. Uh, coming up after especially this season i'm so glad that it's two cores i don't even care that i gotta wait what four five months before i get the next core or whatever it is i'm just so happy that it's it's 24 episodes again because this this is one of the shows that benefits greatly from having longer a longer season just like yeah. fire force did it, it benefits greatly because it's so good and we, we get to benefit from it i guess that's true i'm telling you <laughs> it's I a little swear. selfish but that's true it's so good i want more uh, facts, facts. Uh, all right, gut check. Where do you think it's gonna go for uh, for the school episode? Next episode. Um, I think I think we do like some kind of magic test, bro. <laughs> I think Ooh. it might go that whole that whole arc. That's just like episode where it's like the entry test where he has to test his actual magical prowess, mm -hmm. and then him not having to use incantations can be utilized or. They see what actual magic he has, you know, what what he's capable of. And that will help unlock some of his uh, anxiety and whatnot, because he will have a better idea as to what he's actually capable of, which I'm hoping he's like, as we expect, I hope he's like 
the shit. Yeah, so mine's the uh, is different. Yeah. My my gut check is this. Obviously, he has this invitation. Okay. I think that this school is so prestigious that only one person in fucking 10 years or 100 years or something ridiculous like that gets this invitation. Because he's the one person to get this invitation, because he's made this this big name for himself, he's going to walk in there and he's not going to per se be the big shit, but they're going to look at him like, oh, he's got the... He's the one that got the letter from the headmaster. He's the one that got the letter from the headmaster. And he's going to exude that big shit. He's going to go to the school and the girls are going to fall in love with him because he's a handsome fellow. And he's, he's There's going to be like this, this whole thing that he's never had in his previous life where he kind of starts to go to his head, but he kind of knows he has to chill the fuck out. And then everybody's going to be talking about him. Did you see the new guy? Did you see the new kid? Did you see the guy that got the invitation? And then that's how uh, Sylphie's going to find out that Rudy, who who it is, and she's gonna is that the same Rudy is from? And they gonna say something about incantationless magic, and she's gonna be like that is, and then some 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 big is gonna happen there. Let me let me say this real quick. What's up? That sounds a little too accurate. <laughs> I swear to God, that I know that. Like they, wrote, they sound like they wrote that down. I swear, just like some shit they would do. For some reason, that's what I feel like is exactly what's gonna happen, bro. I don't know what it. I, it's just it's just where I kind of like. Feel my gut check going as I was. I swear I didn't read it. I didn't none of this. So if that, that happens exactly, which I probably, I'm pretty sure won't. I'm pretty sure it's going to be some bullshit where they're going to keep missing each other, something like that. But that's what I want to happen. I think that'd be cool as fuck. Both of yeah. ours, I think, would be cool as hell because seeing him pop off with magic and then people being impressed by that or him just walking in like, yo, this guy's for fucking big shit. I think it's both dope. I think it's both dope. All right. Let's move on. To Zom 100. Mm. This show, this is uh, episode four. It was delayed. It was delayed until today, which is Monday. Which everybody was saying it was sensory because they were trying to they were censoring they were trying to censor stuff. It wasn't okay. the fucking case. None of that was true. They didn't censor anything. Um, it was just that it was a, a production issue with the subs. And even when they uploaded the episode to Crunchyroll. At first, when it first got uploaded, it didn't have any subs whatsoever. So it was just it was just a production issue that went wrong with Zion 100 um, to clarify for the people. Now, this show is uh, is just pleasant. I'm not going to say it's spectacular in any way right now. There's no real story to it. Right. There's not much going on, per se, but it's pleasant. It's pleasant in a way that I didn't think I would like in, for a zombie show. I kind of wanted high school with a dead pleasant. I got a uh, comedy, silly, fun, pleasant. You know what I mean? And I don't understand why, why you put your phone on vibrate while your watch don't shut the fuck up to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but sorry about that. Y'all being here, my watch go off. But it's it's just like I like I enjoy watching it. You know what I mean? For one, our two characters, uh, Kencho and Akari. Uh, yeah, Akira, Akari, I think his name is Akari. Yeah. Are fucking phenomenal characters. I love their attitudes. I love the way they're they doing, they handling the zombie apocalypse thing. I fucking just love that part so much. What I don't like is that I don't feel like this is, I'm getting anything from this. Four episodes in. I'm only four yeah. episodes in, but there's only 12 episodes. So how much more? Like, where are we going to go? Like, is it just this bucket list thing that he's doing? Like, is that it? Yeah. I I think that where this show is falling flat is the uh the lack of the the threat presence, if that makes sense, right? Because oh. we know the threat is there, right? We know the zombies are there, but are they actually scary? And it could be the the choice of colors because of how bright the colors are and everything like that. But you don't get a, a real sense of danger from the actual zombies and that's, that might not actually be the intention. They might literally just be there for comedic relief, but that means that other things have to be really big driving factors. Right. Like, like them sharing the, the, the list of a hundreds and adding to it, like putting it together. That was impactful. That was, yes, I like that, mm-hmm. but that was, that was only a moment in a, in a show that is making this entirety of this moment funny. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like there's no, it has to that moment has to drag. Like, it has to be something attached to that moment to keep us going, for for it to balance out evenly with the comedic relief and some seriousness. Yeah, I mean, well said. 
you got this whole this arc with the whole flight attendant thing. That was it was cool for a little bit, but it, extremely predictable. Like you mm. could tell when a character is going to be a main character, right? Like you can definitely tell. Um, yeah. Not not only because in the intro they show everybody, in the outro they show everybody who's going to be a part of this whole uh, shindig or, or posse of people. That's one of the reasons why, uh, unfortunately, because I don't know why anime do this, but stop putting the entire fucking story in the intro. I like, just don't do that shit. Just, I don't know, start making fucking HBO intros where they're all just 3D shit just going around where they don't have to show who the characters Fire. are. Intro, bro. Yo, Fire Force is spectacular. But uh, stop showing who the characters are. Like, stop showing the entire crew before we even meet the crew. Like this shit is 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 it always bugs me because now I know who the main four people are that's going to be in this show, and everybody else, every other character is fodder. They're there to die to zombies. And that's not for me. I'm not. It's not. I'm not. So far, so, I'm not. I'm not that impressed. So let me do. Let me just say one thing about the fodder characters, though, because we do get quite a bit of fodder characters. You're right. But like we remember the couple that were in the apartment when he was climbing the apartment, like that one was cool. <laughs> that was impactful when he yeah. came back and seeing everything they had obliterated. Right, that was. And right. even in this episode, we had a moment, you know, where you know she was saying her her nice things and whatnot. But that moment instantly got taken away from us, so we didn't even get to expand on that. So it's still like these fighter characters; they are doing a good job of giving us a moment with that. Like I said, still, yeah, they just it's need a nice to find a hook in making these things last. You know, right, right. It was nice ret- uh, perspective for Akari, right? Like it was, it was cool for him to get that. Okay, now I'm about to find my dream. It was to get his little One Piece moment or Naruto moment or fucking whatever moment you want, whatever typical shonen, shonen moment you want to input. It was nice for him to get that uh, influence, but it's also, again, like you said, I need that hook. I'm not, I'm not hooked on anything yet. Like, it's, I love looking at the show. The show is fucking gorgeous. Yeah, I like what the anime animation does, and I like the comedic beats between the two main characters we got so far. But I'm like, I'm kind of just okay. It's like kind of. Let me see. What's the rating on it so far? Eighty percent. But you know why. Yeah, I guess that's true. I Sound just, design, animation. Yeah, true. I just want to put that in perspective. 86? Okay, 86 is higher, thank God. Oh, it's 82%. Hmm. Okay, I was a little worried. I was worried there. I'm like, come on, man. Come on, man. 86? That's actually still pretty low. Yeah, I agree. I agree. A season 2 or core 2 of, of 86? 86%. Funny enough. <laughs> um... Incredible. Okay, I'm I'm I'm, I'm a lo- I feel a little bit more relieved, but I mean even, even like damn. Link click season 2 is killing it right now, 85%. JJK 86%. Okay, okay. All right. All right. All right. But Zom at 80 at 80%. I'm at a I'm at about considering our scale. Put me at about 75. Same 5%? Yeah. That's our skill because the animation, the sound design is fucking up, is is carrying right now. Plot, yeah. plot, I don't. It's it's like there's a, not really one right now. Yeah, exactly. It's like a six point five, I guess. I mean, I would even say that's kind of high, but mm. <laughs> only because like we know what the goal is, but we ain't seeing much direction towards that goal. Maybe maybe like a six point five, six something like that, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, seven seventy five, seven point five. Yeah, sounds accurate, man. Seven seven point three. Seven point three. Uh, pretty good. All right, let's go check it. Man. What you think is gonna happen next episode? I think next episode we're gonna see our next character. Yeah, I mean we would have to. It's only twelve episodes. It's episode five. We already uh, know like, about the running chick. So maybe we get the samurai looking chick. Maybe maybe they all run into each other in the next episode. So instead of getting mm. the running chick alone, we get her and the running chick all together. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, I'm gonna say they're gonna they're gonna do something from the list. They're gonna run into the samurai chick, and then the samurai chick is going to uh, join them. But then all of them do something together where they run into the running chick. That's that's boss. 
But, uh, but to be honest, so to, to be 100% honest with you, I think the show is okay, but for real, for real, I'm at Polo Born Fly on X on all things social media. <laughs> I'm at King Taliano on all social media. You can follow our social medias at Mike Check Waifu on X and at Mike Check Waifu Waifu on Instagram, TikTok, and Threads. Oh, X. <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. And as always, Mike, 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 Mike Check. Check, 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 to Mike Check Waifu Waifu.